So one of the topics that we're going to be talking about today is concussion. And concussion is one of the most widely misunderstood diagnoses out there in the world. I hear a lot of misconceptions frequently, so I'd like to clear up some things. So one of the most common things that I hear is that you can't possibly have a concussion if you didn't lose consciousness, but that's actually not true. So a concussion occurs anytime your head comes into contact with something. Uh, you can either have a fall or a car accident. You hit your head hard enough that the soft, squishy brain on the inside bounces against the hard skull. This can happen um, even without hitting your head. If your body gets a strong enough jolt, you can have your, your brain bounce around a little bit inside your skull, and this causes microscopic bruising so that you have inflammation inside the brain, which can present with all different types of symptoms. So a lot of times patients won't even know that they've had a concussion until a day or two after the injury. But one of the most common things that we hear about are headaches. So patients will come in having hit their head and then a day or two later they develop a pretty severe headache. Sometimes an intense migraine with sensitivity to light, sensitivity to sound, sometimes even nausea and vomiting. And uh, so the idea is we need to try and figure out how to treat these symptoms. One of the other most common complaints is a dizzy feeling, lightheadedness, or sometimes an intense vertigo, a sensation like you're spinning, uh, or like the room is spinning, which is obviously very uncomfortable. Patients also will say that when they're trying to read or look at something very fine print, that it worsens these symptoms, that their headaches and their dizziness get worse when they're trying to concentrate on something up close. So most of the time, our major recommendation for treatment for concussion is brain rest. So giving your brain some time to recuperate um, without a lot of visual or auditory input. So avoiding screens, uh, specifically looking at the fine print on a cell phone, um, avoiding movies with a lot of loud bangs and things like that. Basically trying to stay in a quiet room. So the thing that everybody wants to know is how long do I have to do that for? For most patients, it's pretty short-lived. After a couple of days or a week, you'll start to feel better. For other patients, the symptoms can go on at times even up for a couple of months. And if that happens, you know, we're here to work with our patients and try and treat symptoms to help them be comfortable. One of the most important things and, and what we try to focus on here at Neurology Center is the electrical changes that can happen in the brain associated with the inflammation that happens after a concussion. So when you hit your head hard enough to either black out or see stars and have these symptoms afterwards, sometimes there can be changes to the electrical networking in the brain. And this can manifest, again, with dizziness and headaches and things like that. But patients really need to be monitored um, as quickly as possible after the concussion. So we would like to have patients come in within 24 hours and have something called an EEG study, which you can learn more about. Um, and the EEG study will tell us if there is abnormality to that electrical networking. If that's the case, it may change the course of your treatment over over time. All right, so if you're concerned that you might have had a concussion, you can reach out to our office and schedule an appointment. Like I said, the quicker the better. So as soon as you know, let us know and we'll get you in for an evaluation.